Hi, welcome back. Debbie Elder with Shady Oak Primary School. And today I want to talk to you parents about the importance of the school that you send your child to teaching critical thinking. Super important. It's a skill they're going to need for the rest of their life. And it involves several other skills. So it's it's a little complex. So we need to make sure that the schools that you're looking at, first of all, value critical thinking as something that their students need to have and that they nurture that and give the students a chance to really get involved in it. So it requires reflection. It requires really thinking about what's in front of them and sort of weighing it against what their beliefs are to date. Now, they may be very young and be not sure, so we need to teach them the skills on how to investigate to figure out how it matches up with their beliefs, their values, and what they know to be true. So one of the things that we do is we encourage our students to keep a reflection journal that they reflect on things that happen throughout the day in each of their classes. Sometimes it's what worked today, what did I enjoy, what did I learn, what mistakes that I made that I need to not make again, what did I really enjoy about this subject that was kind of interesting to me. So again, getting them to start the habit of reflection. Then we need them to be able to do an analysis to kind of weigh the pros and cons, to kind of, you know, give it the test to make sure it actually has validity in what they know to be true and to not just be taking somebody's word because it's their best friend, right? So how do you determine that your sources are valid? That's something that needs to be taught. Some adults still need to learn that. Then they need to be able to do research. Now, doing research is great, but students need to be taught how to research and giving time and effort in your curriculum and your daily activities to teach this skill, I believe is really important. We do project-based learning, as I'm sure you're aware here. And so we use a lot of critical thinking skills as we're working on our projects, research being a big one of them. And then next, there needs to be a big piece of creativity. Because if you're trying to solve a problem or think through a situation, you're gonna need to be creative because you can't solve a problem the same way you got into the problem. You've got to be creative. You've got to look at the pieces, look at what's available to you, think it through analytically, seeing what works, what doesn't work, be willing to be persistent, have grit, and then come to your conclusions, right? You want to make a decision based on evidence, based on things that you've found to be true, based on your research. And then there needs to be a commitment and a, a willingness to stand in your decision. Nothing worse than people who are unable to make decisions that, that really robs them of their freedom. So being able to make a decision, stand in it and debate it, right? And, and own it up with other students. So how do we do that here? Well, we use Socratic circles, which allow students to read a passage, typically the same passage, and then they discuss, it's an opinion passage is what I like to use, and then they discuss it. But they can't just say, I like this part of it. They have to back it with evidence from what they've read. And they have to convince the other members of the circle that their ideas is something that they truly believe in. And it's it's where the teacher is sitting back. They're not involved. And the students go back and forth. It's a very much a facilitated discussion that teaches them how to stand in their opinions and back it with evidence, which I think is really important when you're learning how to critical think. We offer our students a lot of voice and choice. So we have to let them practice their critical thinking skills. If I critically think it out for the students and then tell them what to think, that doesn't give them that opportunity. So we need to teach them the steps that I just went through in order for them to be astute critical thinkers and be able to add to discussions and to make sure they keep themselves safe and that they're making decisions that serve them. So being able to have open discussions in class, not necessarily a Socratic circle, but just discussions and, and everybody realizing the power of brainstorming and that no idea is stupid and that we honor other people's suggestions. And we honor it by writing it down. There's nothing says, I hear what you're saying, than to record it. And so we'll write it down, we'll talk about it, and then together we'll think critically and then they learn to do it for themselves on their own. And lastly, we run speech class here. So in order for you to stand up and, and make a stand on something, maybe it's something that you want to inspire the other students to, to take action with, or that you have seen as a problem out in the world and you want to provide a solution, all of these skills together 
articulate the ability to really think critically. So I really hope that you'll include this in your many quiver of things that you're looking for as you're out there hunting to find the right school. I know you're doing the best you can, parents, and I hope these have been helpful. We will see you tomorrow. Stay tuned. <laughs>